Hi, I'm Corey. Today we're going to be talking about the SLA post-processing workflow with our new product, Formlabs Finishing Tools. Finishing Tools are a curated set of post-processing solutions that will take you from support removal, sanding, buffing, and polishing, allowing you to get a better quality result with less effort. This product provides an easy, all-in-one solution for you to receive high-quality, vetted tools to make your post-processing job faster and easier. When you order your finishing tools, you receive them in an all-in-one package here, including instructions, a rotary tool, linear sander, and other pieces inside. The kit is built around two powered tools primarily. The first being an adjustable speed rotary tool that would allow for easy support removal and to get you a nice, smooth surface finish. Our second powered tool is an ergonomic pen sander that will allow you to polish and sand large, flat, or gently curved surfaces much more easily. We also include a silicone working mat that will keep your workspace clean and free from debris, dust, and resin. Larger, more heavy-duty flush cutters that will stand up to resin buildup and spring back to action. A heavy-duty hobby knife that includes a few different attachments for different shapes to help you remove supports. And lastly, we have a microfiber cleaning cloth to help you wipe up any dust and debris, and a spray bottle for either isopropyl alcohol or mineral oil for finishing your parts. So today, we'll be working on this shovel prototype from Black Diamond and thinking about how to post-process using our finishing tools. So this part was printed in gray V4 on a Form 3L all-in-one build platform. Now, typically, the rotary tool would be helpful for removing supports as well, but in this case, the light touch supports on the Form 3 and 3L, you kind of don't need it. However, anytime you do remove supports, there are definitely going to be some bumps and support marks left over. This is where that rotary tool and linear sander are gonna come in handy. Now, large flat surfaces, kind of like the face of this shaft here and the rest of the handle would be ideal for using our linear sander, which is great for, as we mentioned, long flat surfaces and some gentle curves. However, a more organic shape, similar to our African hornbill skull over here, is a little too complex and might need a bit more of a fine touch, where we would recommend one of our finer bits and the rotary tool for getting in these harder to reach nooks and crannies. To start off though, we'll just end up removing all of the supports. As we see here, they come off just a little bit of effort, giving a light twist and separation will remove the bulk of those supports. There's still going to be a good amount left in, especially in deeper areas, similar to the kind of internal channels here. We'll talk about how to remove those shortly. Last part, support removal, done and dusted. So we'll get rid of these support structures and we'll punch in for a closer look with some of these tools. Now that we've removed the bulk of the supports, we still have some support nubs to contend with, as well as some harder to reach supports. So typically, for these harder to reach areas, we'd recommend using either our flush cutters or the hobby knife. The flush cutters are a little bit bigger and you can access them pretty well in this area. However, I think the hobby knife might be a better tool for the job. Now, as mentioned, there are a couple of different blades that come with the hobby kit. In this particular instance, we have a chisel tips end that I think would work probably the best for these particular types. Now with this flat edge tool, you can come in and basically just poke away at those supports, removing them a bit more easily. What's really nice about the hobby knife as well, is you can get pretty close to the actual surface of your part, leaving less of a nub than you might get with flush cutters or some other tools. Another beneficial uh, use of our hobby knife here is to cut the adhesive backed sandpaper that we're going to use on our next tool, the linear sander. There are a couple of different shaped and sized bits so we recommend using them as a template and cutting out the appropriate shape. In this case, we'll be using one of our rectangular tips here to get the bulk of our support marks off of these longer shafts. And now using our linear sander, we're gonna find the bit that best fits the shape in question. So as we have a fairly long and linear surface on both aspects of the handle, we're gonna go ahead and switch to a slightly longer, more rectangular shaped bit and it's best to align the face of the bit with our power side here, so you can ensure that you're holding it in the correct angle. So you'll line it up with the opening inside, twist the bit, make sure it is nice and tight, 
and then we'll get ready to sand. So we're gonna go ahead and get our part here. Look at the surface where we have these all support marks lining either end. And we're going to go ahead and ramp up the speed. And we're gonna want it pretty quick to really get these parts taken care of. So a pen sander is really nice and that it's linear. It goes in and out. So it really does the sanding motion for you. All you're really gonna have to do is just run up and down the length of the shaft here, letting that bit do all of the sanding for you. As we see with our gray resin, you're gonna really notice the areas that are sanded. They're gonna look very white, but in time, we're gonna go through and both buff and polish these areas to really help it blend in seamlessly. Now that we're done with the first pass of sanding, in order to get a better understanding of what the surface is going to look like, we recommend applying some isopropyl alcohol to our microfiber cleaning cloth here and giving the surface a wipe down. The isopropyl is nice in that it will remove all of the dust from our surface and is also very quick drying, so you get a better understanding of what your finished part is going to look like. As we see, a night and day difference between pre-cleaned and post-cleaned. And now with phase one of the shaft portion completed, we're gonna move on to the handle. Much in the same way, we'll use the same bit for now and get most of these support marks off of our surface. Depending on the speed of your linear sander, the material that you're working on, and how many support marks, will really determine how much time and pressure you need to put into each one of these passes. After a bit of usage, you're gonna find that sweet spot pretty quickly. So, as we move on to finish the shovel portion, or the blade of the shovel, we're gonna bring in some more uh, curved and sloped tools to really deal with these curves here. So in that case, we're gonna be pivoting over to our rotary tool. Now this rotary tool might be a little dissimilar to others you've used before. It is not incredibly powerful, and that is for a reason. The SLA resins can sometimes be a bit softer than most hard plastics. We want to ensure you're not marring the surface too much. So we'll go in a little bit slower using one of these sort of conical burr attachments here to ride the inner lip of some of these curves. So we'll get it up to speed and we'll start making our way and grinding off some of these bigger support marks. Since this is a more aggressive sort of process, you'll definitely notice a bit more dust coming off the parts. And similarly to the others, we'll use that microfiber cleaning cloth to get rid of some of this debris. Definitely getting better and still some other areas to polish up, which we'll get to in just a moment using our polishing discs. So now that we have the bulk of our sanding done and support removal, we'll notice the surfaces are still gonna be a little bit rough. So what we wanna do now is pivot over to using some of our polishing wheels over here. Those will also be used on our rotary tool. So we'll go ahead and although a little dusty, we'll press the safety release button, unscrew the cap and replace with one of our polishing wheels. Now, one thing to note is that it does come with two different types of collets here for our bits. We have a 2.35 millimeter and a three millimeter. Uh, our bits are three mil, but really any type of bit you can fit will work for you on this rotary tool. So all we're gonna do now with our buffing disc installed is take a look at one of these rougher surfaces that we were looking at beforehand, put the speed up pretty high, and then try to work out some of these more ground up areas. We'll get her started. And much in the same fashion. Just come in kind of light, give it a good amount of pressure, and you'll see the color lighten up quite a bit. What this is doing is reaching into these grooves and channels we've created from sanding and really just pulling out any of that dust that's gotten trapped inside. As mentioned before, it's not gonna be very high powered, so that way we don't grind up any of your pieces. You might notice small sputters and stops, but it picks right back up where it left off as a safety feature. I'm gonna go through and buff our way with this gray disc I have found works on the gray. And then we're gonna move over to a second wheel before we finish with a mineral oil polish.
And now with phase one of our buffing complete, we're gonna go ahead and pivot over to one more buffing wheel. I found the red seems to work pretty well for a secondary polish. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. to our last piece of the shovel. So now with the last bit of buffing completed, our last step sets you up for either finishing your part with a mineral oil, which we'll do in just a moment, or priming to paint your parts, depending on what you prefer. So we're gonna go ahead and apply some mineral oil and show you how much that really does to get these last little bits of surface scrapes and scuffs out of sight. And so not included, we have a bit of mineral oil here that is really great for polishing up your parts and getting rid of these last little bits of scuffs. So we'll notice that the oil is a little too viscous to work great on a spray bottle like this, but it'll get the job done. So we go ahead and get a bit of mineral oil on our rag. And then we're gonna go ahead and wipe down any scraped up surfaces. And we'll see pretty quickly, a lot of those surfaces are gonna go ahead and just disappear right in to the rest of the part. Looking good so far. Let's get these last two pieces done here and we're almost home free. And so as we can see, that mineral oil makes a really big difference in the finished product. So now that we're done with our buffing and mineral oil wipe down, we'll go ahead and assemble the shovel. These parts just slot right in. And there we have it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are very pleased to announce that the finishing tools will be available today on our web store for $299 US dollars. Thank you so much.